All right, so we're gonna go through the four two warm up and then the four three notes on this video. So the four two, hopefully now that we're getting really good at the unit circle, uh, things like number one should be pretty easy, okay? I am gonna give you back your unit circle before your test because I don't want you to waste 15 minutes of test time refilling out a unit circle that you just proved, hopefully, that you can do. But that means, however, that most of your questions are not gonna be on the unit circle. They're gonna be co-terminal angles, which you can apply, but they're not gonna be just giving me questions straight from your unit circle like a number one would be, okay? So if you remember that anything over six would be your root three and root three over two and one half point, okay? Then that's gonna help you with the actual values. Then all you have to do is figure out where that seven pi over six lies. That's one and one six pi, which is gonna be in your third quadrant, which means these are both negative. So that tells you that your sine is negative one half. Your cosine is negative root three over two. And then your tangent is root or negative one half over root three over negative root three over two. And then you do the keep change flip and rationalize, and you end up with root three over three, and it's positive because they were both negative. So I would actually advise that if you're good at memorizing things, you add on to those points your tangents. So the tangents of the root three, or sorry, of the over threes. Anything over three, your tangent is just root three. Again, ignoring the positive and negative sign because that depends on which quadrant it's in. And then anything that's over six is root three over three. So I remember it by it takes one three to make three, but it takes two three to make six. So if that helps you remember it, it's gonna obviously help you now. So like when you get your unit circle on your test, you could go around and add your tangents on, okay? And it'll save you the time of the keep change flip, but it's also gonna help you when we get into inverse uh, functions, which is a little bit down the road. And then your root two and obviously that over fours are going to be one because your x and your y's are the same thing. All right, so if I look at 11 pi over three, I know it's an over three, which means my point is one half and root three over two. And then 11 over three is what in mixed number form? Three and two thirds. So we talked about it day before yesterday, but an odd whole number ends up on the right. So if I went around, this would be, I'm sorry, on the left, it would be one, two, three. I'd be back over here. And then I just have to use the two thirds to tell if that happens in the first quadrant, I would hit after that line or the second. And that's, is it bigger or smaller than a half? Two thirds is bigger than a half, right? Which means that this point would be in my fourth quadrant. And in my fourth quadrant, my X is positive and my Y is negative. So now I've got my points to answer the question sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine, negative root three over two, cosine, one half, and tangent, we just said any over three is root three, and because one's positive and one's negative, it's a negative root three. Yep. Can you go into how you found like the, the one on the fourth quadrant instead of the second quadrant? Yep. So what I do is, God bless you. I convert it into mixed number, right? So the three and then the two thirds is what it is in mixed number format. If that whole number is even, then I'd start here and work my way counterclockwise. But because it was odd, I'd start here and work counterclockwise. And then after I hit that whole number, the, the question is, is the fractional part of that bigger or smaller than a half? Because that's your cutoff point, right? That, that axis is your one half mark. So because two thirds is bigger than one half, I would know that it goes past the one half mark and goes into that fourth quadrant. Does that make sense? So three is odd, is that? Three is odd, so it puts it on the left, and then two thirds is bigger than a half, so I go past the y-axis. And if it was four, it would have been on the other side? Exactly, so if it was four and two thirds, I'd be over here with the whole number part, and then two thirds is still bigger than a half, so I go past the halfway mark, and I know it's in the second quadrant. So I break it down into the whole number format and then the fractional format. That's, I mean, that's the way I see it. All right, so then on yesterday's video, I went over odd and even functions. So the even functions, and there's only two of them, are cosine and its reciprocal function, which is secant. The even functions means that even if you change the sign on the angle, it does not change the sign on the trig function. So again, even if, if you think even, right? So odd, um, cosine and secant are even functions and even, that means that even if I change the sign on the angle, it does not change the sign on the trig function. 
all other functions and their reciprocal functions. If I change the sign on the angle, it changes the sign on the trig function. So if I give you that the sign of positive t is 4 fifths, what's the sign of negative t? Negative 4 fifths. It changes the sign. And then the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, but pay attention to what angle it's talking about. It's talking about my original angle. So I would take that 4 fifths and flip it so that it's 5 fourths. What would you have told me if I asked for cosecant of negative t? Negative 5, negative five fourths. Okay. And then 4 and 5, you're using the calculator to follow, I mean to find the functions and round your uh, decimal to 4 decimal places. So remember, this is where you've got to be careful about your switching back and forth between your modes. So if you look at number four, what mode should my calculator be in? Radians. And there's no such thing as cosine, so this means this would be one over cosine four pi over seven. And I would again make sure that my calculator is in radians, one divided by cosine four pi divided by 7, and you get negative 4.49395. The 5 rounds up the 9, the 9 rounds up the 3, and my answer would be negative 4.4940. So I would say be really careful because you keep that in degrees and you get an answer. You'll be checking along on your test thinking that everything is right and you're getting all the wrong answers because your mode is wrong. Cotangent of 35, now that mode would be what? Degrees. So I would do 1 divided by the tangent of 35, which is 1.4281. Questions on any of the warm up? Monica. The which oh the negative four point four nine it was it was four nine three nine five so the five had to round up the nine and the nine would round up the three. You're welcome. So four two was all unit circle based. Four three all right triangle trig based. There are going to be times in which you have to use one over the other, so make sure you know how to do both. But then there's going to be situations in which you can choose, and I don't care which one you choose as long as you get it right. Okay. So all this stuff now takes all the stuff that we know about triangles and applies it to the trig functions. So this magical little acronym that most of adult people even still remember, that's not in most books, which is SOHCAHTOA. If you can spell it, you can get your trig functions based on a right triangle. So this is an acronym that stands for SOH sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine CAH adjacent over hypotenuse. And TOA tangent equals opposite over adjacent. And those are sides. So if I had a right triangle and I wanted to find the trig functions based on the angle that's marked, then the sine would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. So again, as long as you can spell the word SOHCAHTOA, by the time test time comes around, you should have that memorized. So there, here's the overlap, right? The right side is your unit circle, the left side is your right triangle. That unit circle is based on the right triangle being placed inside the unit circle. That's where the overlap comes from. So let's just focus on the right triangle for now. The sides or the angles, capital A, capital B, and capital C, and then opposite them are your lowercase, I got it, lowercase letters A, B, C. So fill in those ratios based on those letters. So I would say be careful and pay attention to where the angle is located because sometimes it will be asking you these questions based on one acute angle and sometimes it's the other one. This time it's theta, it's the only one that's marked, which is down here. So when I say that the sine of theta, I'm talking about the side opposite theta, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is C. The cosine is adjacent, which is B, over the hypotenuse, which is C. And then tangent A opposite over B adjacent. 
And then the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent, we can just flip. So cosecant would be a hypotenuse over opposite, or C over A. Secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent, or C over B. And cotangent would be adjacent over opposite, or B over A. So if you already have the left side functions, it's easy to flip it. Uh, and then if not, you just got to think about the Sokotoa in your head flipped to get to the right side. Everybody's good so far, right? We remember this stuff? Yes? Mm -hmm. That, so like that's where the unit circle measurements come from. If you took this triangle and you put it inside the circle, that's where all those X and Y values come from. So the X is your adjacent side, right? If I'm talking about this angle here, the X is the adjacent, the Y is the opposite, and then the hypotenuse is your um, radius of your circle. So it's just that you can flip flop between them, and that's where the unit circle comes from. So this is just showing you that no matter what size the triangle is, if the angles are the same measurement, the ratios will always be the same. So if I were to compare, let's say, these first two triangles, each of them is theta, so it doesn't, so you're saying that the angle doesn't change. You can have a teeny tiny 30, 60, 90 triangle, or you can have a big one, and either way, the ratio of the side lengths will always reduce to be the same thing. So in this case, A over B is three over two, if I double that triangle in size, it's still three over two. If I cut it in half, it's still three over two. So the ratio always stays the same no matter what the actual size of the triangle is as long as the angles don't change. All right, so here's our first right triangle. So we can't use unit circle on things like this. This is a based on right triangle. It says find this, the value of each of the six trig functions of theta if you're given that B is four and C is two root five. So the first thing you have to know is all three side lengths. Do you have all three side lengths? How could you find a missing side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. So four squared plus a squared equals two root five squared. 16 plus a squared equals, this would be four times five, which is 20. A squared would equal 4, and A equals technically plus and minus 2, but can the measure of a length of a triangle be negative? No. So I just keep the positive 2. Now I've got all three side lengths. So sine opposite over hypotenuse, 2 over 2 root 5. Every single fraction has to be simplified and rationalized. So this is root 5 over 5. Cosine 4 over 2 root 5. Again, simplify and rationalize. Tangent opposite over adjacent. And then the reciprocal functions. And if I could give you one piece of advice, is when you go to flip to get your reciprocals, flip the ratio before it was rationalized. So I'm instead of going to take, instead of taking 5 over root 5 and then rationalizing that, you're basically rationalizing something you already rationalized. Flip it before it was rationalized. So go back to the 1 over root 5 spot and use that one. So I'd get root 5 over 1 or root 5. For secant, go back to the cosine before we rationalize it, which is here. Flip it and it's root 5 over 2. And then cotangent flip it. This time it wasn't rationalized, but it was simplified. 1 over 2 becomes 2. Questions on that one? So right triangles, you got to get all three side lengths and then figure out from there and make sure your answers are always simplified and make sure they're always rationalized. All right, so a question that is on every single standardized test I've ever seen is 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles, or special right triangle lengths. These specifically, we're saying, would have an A or an X of 1. So the regular relationship of 45, 45, 90 is X, X, and X root 2. And of 30, 60, 90 is opposite the 30 is your X, opposite the 60 is X root 3, and opposite the 90 is 2X. What we're saying here is that x is 1. And then these side lengths are formed. 
So this is where the overlap happens. You can choose every time you're finding the sine, cosine, tangent, or cosecant, secant, and cotangent of a special angle being 30 degrees, 60 degrees, or 45 degrees. You can choose to utilize what you know about the unit circle and find it, or you can choose to draw yourself a right triangle, set up your side lengths, and figure out your ratios. So whichever way works for you, you want to stick to it. So if you saw that if I use this triangle here, let's say, and it said to find the sine of 30, it would be opposite over hypotenuse, which opposite the 30 is the 1 and, op and the hypotenuse is 2. That's your 1 half. Same thing as getting the y coordinate at pi over 6. So you've got to just be able to do one or the other, and I don't care which one, whichever one makes sense. So use, I would say for today, practice your right triangles. So draw yourself a right triangle with those side lengths and then find your trig functions based on that. So for cosecant, the hypotenuse of this triangle is two. And the opposite side, opposite of 30, which is my top angle here, is 1. So this would be 2. The secant, hypotenuse over adjacent, hypotenuse is again 2. Adjacent to that 30 is now root 3. And that gets rationalized to be 2 root 3 over 3. And then cotangent is adjacent over opposite, or root 3 over 1, which is root 3. Then find the cosecant of 60, the secant of 60, and the cotangent of 60. So if I flip, and now we're doing the 60 angle, which is down here in the bottom, and I'm answering all the same questions, but based on that angle. So hypotenuse is still 2, but this time opposite of 60, God bless you, is root 3. And again, that gets rationalized to 2 root 3 over 3. For the first part, mm -hmm. cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, right? Right. So it's... So the hypotenuse is 2, and then opposite of 30 is 1. The secant of 60 is hypotenuse, which is 2, over the adjacent side, and adjacent to 60 is 1, so this is 2. And then the cotangent, the adjacent side to 60 is 1, the opposite side is root 3, and that gets rationalized to be root 3 over 3. So what do you notice about the relationship between the cosecant of 30 and the secant of 60? They're the same. How about the secant of 30 and the cosecant of 60? They're the same. So these are called angles that are complementary, right? If I flip-flop which one I'm talking about, the opposite becomes the adjacent. The adjacent becomes opposite. So that should make sense that these two would crisscross. And then these two are going to be the reciprocals of each other. Questions so far? Okay, so now the calculator comes out. This is the easy part. You get your brain a break. However, you got to be super careful, okay? Because notice that these are bouncing back and forth again. So this is use the calculator to evaluate the function, round your answer to four decimal places. So when I start with A, what mode should my calculator be in? Degrees, so this is 1 over the sine of 35. And I get 1.7434. And then you go to secant of 83 degrees and 15 minutes. So this is in that degree, minute, second mode, okay? You don't have to convert it. You can actually type it in exactly like that. Your calculator will find it, okay? So if I did that, that would look like 1 over the cosine of 83 degrees and 15 minutes. And if I type that in the calculator, making sure my mode is what? Is that degrees or radians? That's degrees. Cosine 83. Remember your degrees is in your second apps. 15, that's where your single tick mark is to. So 
when you type it in, again, you can leave it like that. You can convert it from degree, minute, second to decimal degree. Just be really careful. Don't round it. Make sure that you can pull back that answer so that it's not rounded. Otherwise, your answer becomes less accurate. So this is 8.5079. And then the last one, cotangent of pi over 7. Now what mode does my calculator need to be in? Radians. And this is 1 over tangent pi over 7. And I get 2.07652. So 0, 7, 6, 5. Again, should be super easy, but there's not partial credit given on those, so you got to be careful. You want to make sure you're in the right mode and that you're not careless. Do you have to put like the opposites or cosecant opposite sign? The reciprocal, yeah, because you don't have a cosecant bud. So you got to do one over it, yeah. And that would be, if, if I was to give a piece of advice, is to make sure you write out that step because it seems like it's a wasted step. However, if you do type it wrong into your calculator, I can give you a little bit of partial credit because at least I know what you intended to type in. So at least I can give you partial credit. All right, we'll just talk about cofunctions and then we'll, I'll stop live in class with you today, but then I'll finish on the video. So cofunctions are two functions that result in the same answer. And they are determined by their complements. So if you go back to what we talked about with 60, 30, 90, the sine of 60 was the same as the cosine of 30. The cosine of 60 is the same as sine of 30. So when I give you an angle and I ask for its cofunction that has the same value, you want to know these pairings. So I want to know sine goes with cosine, tangent goes with cosecant, secant goes with cosecant, and then obviously these are just in the reverse order. And I want to be able to identify a complement. So if I told you to give me the cofunction of sine of 30 degrees, you would tell me it's cosine because sine and cosine go together. And you would give me the complement to 30 degrees, which is what? 60 degrees. And if I type both those answers or both those into the same calculator, I get the same answer. Okay? They should both be one half. And then if it's in radians, you'll replace 90 with pi over 2. So example four says to find a cofunction with the same value as the given expression. So again, we wanna make sure that we know the pairing, cosine with sine, cosecant with secant, and cotangent with tangent, and then just find the complement. So if it says cosine of 20 degrees, then the cofunction would be the sine of 90 minus 20, which is 70 degrees. And then the cotangent of 40 would be tangent of 90 minus 40, which is 50 degrees. So you just got to memorize the pairing and then find the complement. Example five says use the given function values and the geometric identity, or sorry, trigonometric identities to find the indicated trigonometric functions. So this is the first time that we've had to actually set up our own triangle. So these are ones that are obviously right triangle based and not unit circle based. So what you want to do is draw yourself a triangle, put theta in any corner, doesn't matter either of the acute ones, just not the right one and then go with what they, they actually give you as information. So this says the cosecant of three, which is the reciprocal of sine, which means that sine, instead of being three, would be one over three, which means the opposite side is one and the hypotenuse is three. So then what we're missing from this triangle is our third side, which we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find one squared plus x squared equals three squared, one plus x squared would equal nine, x squared would equal 8, and x would equal square root of 8, which is 2 root 2. So based on the first piece of information, this is what we were given. Now the second piece of information actually might throw you off because it says the secant is 3 root 2 over 4, and there's no 4 on my triangle, but hopefully what you realize is that if it was the secant, because it's the reciprocal of cosine, it would be hypotenuse over adjacent, and so I'd get 3 over 2 root 2, which would have to be rationalized to 3 root 2 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And that's where that comes from. So as soon as you have the two sides of your triangle, you can actually set it up. You don't even need that second piece of information. But it does help to solidify what you've got. So now based on that, I've got the sine of theta. Again, theta is in this corner. Sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, or 1 over 3. Cosine of theta. Theta is in this corner adjacent over hypotenuse or two root two over three. 
tangent of theta opposite over adjacent 1 over 2 root 2, which gets rationalized to root 2 over 2 times 2 or 4. And then the last one, which is secant of 90 minus theta. So this is one we have to find the co-function of. The equivalent of secant 90 minus theta would be cosecant of theta. So again, that one we're already given. That's just 3. All right, example 6. So these hopefully are a flashback to geometry. This is where you've got a triangle and you've got an angle that's not a special angle, so it's not 30, 60, 90, or 45, and you're looking for information that's missing. You'll either be looking for an angle or you'll be looking for the side lengths, like in this case. So these you have to have a calculator for. You can't do these without it. So anytime that the angles inside are not 30, 60, or 45, you have to use your calculator. So I want to break this apart. Let's say I want to solve for x first. So look at the information that you're given. I've got this angle, and then I've got 7.8, which is opposite of that angle. And then I'm looking for x, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So from that, you can pick your trig function. Opposite and hypotenuse would tell you that I have to use sine. So the sine of 32 equals the side opposite 32, which is 7.8, over the hypotenuse, which is x. So then I can multiply both sides by 8. Or sorry, by x, so I get x times sine of 32 equals 7.8. And then I would divide both sides by the sine of 32. And then this is in the calculator. And because it's degrees, we want to make sure the mode on our calculator is degrees. And I do 7.8 divided by the sine of 32. And I get x equals 14 point, And we're going to just round this to one decimal place for now. 14.7. So now when I go to find the third side, I actually have two options here. One is Pythagorean theorem, and the other is to use the information that I was given at the beginning. Which is the better of these two? Because if we stick, use Pythagorean theorem, we have rounded 14.7, which means our side link is going to be a little bit less accurate. But we can, however, use it to check. So from here, now I'm going to, again, use 32, the angle that they gave me, the 78 or 7.8, which is still opposite. And this time I'm looking for y, which is adjacent. And that trig function would be tangent. So opposite is 7.8 over adjacent is y. And then multiply y on both sides and divide by oh, tangent of 32. So there's actually a shortcut, which I'll tell you about in just a second. So let's finish this one out, tangent of 32. 7.8 divided by the tangent of 30, 3, 32. And I get y equals 12.5. So the shortcut is if this is in the bottom. So if I can erase this little bit of work here. And we went through the process of multiplying both sides by y and then dividing by the tangent of 32. If I start out with my trig function and the variables in the bottom, then the shortcut is just to take the numerator of that fraction and divide it by the other side. Sometimes we'll have the, the value in the bottom and the variable in the top, and for that one we would multiply, which you'll see an example. But for right now, if the value's in the top and the variable's in the bottom, then we take the numerator and divide it by the sine or cosine or tangent of the angle that's on the other side. All right, so now let's take these three sides and check them. So if I did it right, then 7.8 squared plus 12.5 squared should equal 14.7 squared. So 7.8 squared plus 12.5 squared is 217.09. And then 14.7 squared is 216.09. So we rounded this, which is why it's not 100% accurate, but at least it's close enough to know that we were on the right track. Okay, now we're going to get into some right triangle trig word problems. So some background information on what you'll need to know in order to read these is that the angle formed by the horizontal line and the line of sight to an object that's above the horizontal line is called the angle of elevation. So if you're looking at this little person that's on the patio, I mean on a balcony here, 
his line of sight is straight out. The angle of elevation would be the angle that his eye would make with an object that's above his horizontal line of sight. So angle of elevation is from straight out and up. So he doesn't have to be on a patio. He could be on the floor looking up at something and he would make an angle of elevation. And then the angle of depression is the horizontal line down to something below your eye line, like the car that's there. So the most common mistake people make with this is putting the angle of depression here, which is wrong. Angle of depression goes from eye level down. So angle of elevation is horizontal up and angle of depression is eye level down. So here's the first example. It says the irregular blue shape is a pond. The distance across the pond A is unknown. To find the distance, a surveyor took the measurements shown in the figure. What's the distance across the pond? So hopefully this is super easy. This is kind of baby stepping us into some problems where we actually have to set up our picture. So here's your angle A. The distance across the pond they gave you is 125. And the angle made there is 24 degrees. So if it wants to know, or sorry, the distance from the person to the pond. If it wants to know the distance across the pond, that's this segment here, which is labeled as A. So just like the last one, we look at the angle that we're given and the two pieces of information we either have or are looking for. A, side A is opposite the 24 and the 125 is adjacent to the 24. And opposite over adjacent would be tangent. So I would say the tangent of 24 equals the side opposite, with the, which is A, over side adjacent, which is 125. And here's one in which the, numer the numbers in the bottom and the variables in the top. So all I have to do is multiply that 125 on both sides. It cancels from the right. And in the calculator, I would just type in 125 times the tangent of 24. And I get A equals 55 point. And again, we're going to round to the nearest tenth, which is 7. And this time we have a measurement, which is feet. All right, last example. This time it says a building is 20 meters high, 21 meters high, and casts a shadow of 25 meters long. Find the angle of elevation of the sun to the nearest degree. So you're going to eventually have to be drawing these on your own, so make sure this makes sense to you. Building that's 21 meters high. This would be my height, 21 meters high. Cast a shadow, so the shadow would be back here on the ground. That's 25 meters long. And the angle of elevation, there's two ways to look at this. So angle of elevation is ground level up. This would be my angle of elevation. The sun that's up there would mean that if I continued this up, here's my sun, which is casting the shadow. This angle and this angle are actually corresponding angles, if you remember that from your parallel lines, which means that they would be congruent. So you can simply find the measure of this angle down here and it will give me the angle of elevation of the sun. So now we actually have two of the side lengths, but we're missing the angle. And a lot of you ask, what is that negative one buttons on your calculator? And this is where they come into play. So this is my, again, this is my angle. And I've got opposite and adjacent. So I would say that the tangent of theta, which is our unknown, equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. When you are given the trig ratio, which is what we have, and you're looking for the angle measurement, then you use your inverse buttons, which would say tangent negative one. So I do tangent negative one of 21 over 25, and it gives me the measure of that angle. So second tangent is where that's located, of 21 divided by 25. And I get theta, is 40.0 degrees. And it actually says to the nearest degree, so it's just 40 degrees. So again, just to summarize, if you're given the ratio, like a number in the top and a number in the bottom, and you're looking for theta, then you use the negative ones. So you would either use tangent negative one 
sine negative 1 or cosine negative 1, depending on what information you're given. If you're given the angle and you want to find a side, then you use your regular trig fun function, function buttons, tangent, sine, and cosine. So I'm just going to throw in one more quick example. If I was looking for theta and I had 5 over 13, let's say, because I'm looking for the angle, I would set up my statement. 5 is opposite, 13 is hypotenuse, so this would be the sine of theta would equal 5 over 13. And then because I have the full ratio, I would do the sine negative 1 of 5 over 13, and it would give me the angle measurement which is 22.6 degrees. If I, instead of missing the angle, was missing a side length, so let's say this was reversed, and this said 15 degrees, oh, this should have been a right angle the whole time, and this is X, now I'm using sine, set it up the same way, except this time I have an angle measurement. Sine of 15 would equal x over 13. And then I'd multiply both sides by 15. Or sorry, by 13. And I'd get 13 times the sine of 15. And that's your regular sine button. And I'd get 3.4. And that would be the length of the side. So when you're looking for the length, you use your regular buttons. When you're looking for the angle, you use theta. All right, so that's a lot of right triangle trig. Hopefully most of it is review, but you definitely could use the practice that's on the homework assignment. Good luck.